Good morning, audience, classmates, and tutors. My name is Akuma Karimova, and this is Piotr Wieluzinski. And our paper focused on food waste, uh, focusing specifically on the retail sector. Before we begin, I'd like to make it clear that our project is part of a bigger project involving Gonzalo Van Hul, Angela Van Hul, and Manuel. And the idea is that we will try to connect, make a bridge between all the food waste that is being produced on the retail sector and provide it for the millions, well, <laughs> all over the world, millions, but in Spain, thousands of people who do not have access to food. And we'll go to the details after we finish the presentation. So let's begin. First, we'll begin with the overview. We'll first present you with the global statistics of food waste. We'll then focus on the emphasis of supermarkets, why we chose supermarkets. We'll continue to analyze the food waste problem, looking at how it can be solved, and in the end, we'll present you with a practical approach how you can take the idea and go to the supermarkets and try to convince them to start addressing the issue of food waste. So let's look at the global statistics. 1.3 billion tons of food that we produce all over the world is wasted. This stands for one third of food going to waste, meaning that all the resources that were involved in producing this food are also wasted. If we collect all this food, we can feed the almost one billion people who are hungry four times. Now let's look at some examples. We first start with Europe. Let's start here in Spain. In Spain, each individual, individual produces 63 kilograms of food waste. That's just on the consumer level. If we add up all the levels, which is the manufacturing, the retail, and the consumer, each individual produces 167 kilograms of food waste a year. If we look at all the households in Spain, we'll get this number, 3 million tons of food waste a year. Now, let's go to a neighboring country, France. In France, each individual produces 97 kilograms of food waste. When adding up all the, uh, the, the sectors, the manufacturing, retail, and consumer, it gives us 139 kilograms of food waste. All the households in France produce 6 million tons of food waste. If we focus our attention on another part of the world, Sub-Saharan Africa, we'll see completely different results. Each individual produces only 6 to 11 kilograms of food waste a year. You will see how drastic this changes. Okay, so uh, just to give you a brief notion of what are the percentage of uh, waste in different sectors um, in developed countries. Uh, in, at the manufacturing level, the share of food waste is uh, oscillate between 20 and 25 percent. At the uh, distribution and retail sector, which means big uh, food companies such as Unilever or Nestle, and of course supermarkets, is 15 to 20 percent, and at the consumer level is the higher one, and it's 55 to 65 percent. Of course, uh, these numbers depends on different countries, and as I already said before, in uh, developing countries, this number, for instance, at the consumer level, would be far, uh, far lower. Uh, let's start talking about uh, benefits of uh, reducing food waste. First of all, uh, I would like to sh tell you uh, what can be done with food waste. So. First thing is uh, food waste can be used in an intelligent way, such as uh, it can be donated, it can be uh, to homeless shelters or to food banks, or it can also be um, used in various different ways for, for composting, and, and it will give a lot of benefits to the society. Another uh, thing is to reduce food waste to a lowest level possible. Of course, it's not possible to reduce food waste to zero because there is some food waste that is unavoidable. But with this, there is, food waste has a lot of negative impact. So if you reduce the, the amount of food that is wasted, you also reduce the negative impacts, which mm -hmm. eventually will create benefits. So here we have uh, the negative impacts. We divided them into three categories, environmental, economic, and social. As far as environmental are concerned, uh, the first issue is the uh, emissions of greenhouse gases. Actually, food waste uh, emissions account for 3% of all of the European uh, 
uh, greenhouse gases emissions, um, which is quite significant as you think of uh, such a small uh, issue as its food waste compared to other like transportation or uh, energy. Um, then there is another issue which is water and land misuse. For instance, in such a country as Spain, um, where water scarcity is a big issue, if almost 50% of food is wasted here, imagine what happens with all the water that uh, is used to produce all this food. Well, it also, you can say, that goes to waste. Uh, also, with uh, the environmental impacts, you have also the waste of other resources, mainly the non-renewable resources, such as oil, which are also used uh, to produce waste. Um, uh, as, uh, when we talk about economic impacts, uh, the first thing is that supermarkets tend to uh, forecast their orders in a very bad way. Um, supermarkets, when they sell their products, for instance, let's say sandwiches, they, sell, they buy the sandwiches for one euro and then they buy them for two euros. So if they sell 50% of those sandwiches plus one sandwiches, of course not uh, talking about all the other uh, cost, they would already get a profit. So they need to, to change this, this behavior. Uh, in Spain, when we're talking about all the um, avoidable uh, waste, um, a study uh, carried out by Albal, an organization here in Spain, said that 45% of food waste in Spain is avoidable. And this 45% of food waste accounts for 5.2 billion euros. It's, of course, not all of this money is wasted because people pay for this, farmers get the money and they maybe use it for some good reasons, but some of this money could be used in a more um, useful way. Um, as far as social impacts are concerned, the main issue here is this uh, debate between food waste and hunger. As Sukuma said before, uh, there's almost one billion people that are hungry in the world, and on the other hand, in the developed countries, we have so much waste. So it's a very um, um, difficult topic how to address this food to the poor countries. Another issue is the climate change consequences. Of course, as I said, the significance of uh, the greenhouse gases emission is not that bad, but still it's contribute to climate change and it may have effect on some, um, on some uh, areas of the world and on the society that live close to the coast or have a natural disaster, etc. And another very important issue is the rise in food prices. Uh, food waste creates an artificial higher demand of food that actually we, we eat. We buy much more than we need and it results in, um, in rise of prices. Also, when we use more oil for producing food, we um, make that the prices of oil are rising and which also influence the uh, rise in food prices. So, so. Let's look at why we chose supermarkets. As was demonstrated before, supermarkets, the retail sector, it produces only 15 to 20 percent of the waste. However, it has a lot of power. Uh, the supermarkets, they're the intermediary between the manufacturing and the consumer level because your average consumer, he doesn't go to a farmer to buy his milk and eggs, he goes to the supermarket. And because that happens, the, most of the buying, most of the buying happens in supermarkets. And supermarkets, because of this power, they have a lot of influence. For instance, Walmart, they, it's a big grocery store and they have other, um, they sell other products as well. And they are one, they make, they have the biggest turnover. So you, will, you, you can see how supermarkets, how these companies have so much influential power both on the manufacturers and on the consumers. An interesting fact is that the, the way supermarkets influence consumer behavior is that when you go to a supermarket, you are bombarded with so much information. For instance, a lot of supermarkets like to make deals, buy one, get one free. Of course, when a consumer sees this, eventually a light bulb goes off and they're like, I can, I can get more for my buck if I buy this deal. Also, they don't have the choice to buy in smaller packaging because the packaging that you get in the supermarkets is set. You can't go to a manager and tell, tell him, can I get half of these eggs? So the way that supermarkets present food and the deals that they have really affects how people consume food and how they buy it. Now, let's look at the Spanish retail sector. 
More than 80% of all the purchasing in Spain happen in supermarkets. And they happen in the big five supermarkets that you just saw earlier, which is Mercadona, Open Core, uh, Dino Sol, and others. And 55% of the purchasing in Spain happen in one of those big five companies. Now, because of the culture in Spain and the diet, 50% of the food waste that is generated in Spain is made of fruits and vegetables. Interestingly enough, none of the supermarkets in Spain write anything about their own food waste. They only focus on packaging and recycling, but you can never find information about how much food waste they produce. Okay, so uh, let's start with the analysis of uh, the food waste problem at the supermarket level. Uh, here you have a list of reasons we have found at the, at the Spanish uh, level that are the most important uh, for, um, for food waste uh, here in Spain. We don't have time, uh, unfortunately, to explain in details each one of them. Uh, however, we have created a matrix uh, that will show you the um, differentiation between the each reasons as far as importance for food waste reduction and the feasibility within a year or uh, relative uh, low cost. Here they are also grouped in, um, in three um, sections, red legislative, green social and blue packaging. So let's start with the less important and less feasible. You have desire for imported products, which is very hard to change with the growing globalization because people just want food from all over the world. As they already know them, they, they traveled, so they just want the mango for, from Latin America, for instance. Uh, health and sanitation issue also will be very hard to change because people don't want to buy uh, soft tomatoes or don't want to buy uh, bananas with black stains, which are perfectly edible, but this is just a habit uh, we all have. Um, here are some uh, more feasible, but still not that important issue. We have two from packaging, which are damaged boxes, which happen because of poor deliveries, and, or just consumers that touch the, for instance, cereal boxes. You can find them open and then they're not b bought and wasted. Exposure to bacteria, uh, fruits and vegetables, especially here in Spain, for instance, they are in the rows that people come from outside, they touch them, they then put away because, for instance, they are too soft or something else and they, they rot faster. And, as Hukuma have mentioned, the bug off deal, which is the buy one, get one free, which make um, people buy more and afterwards they throw it away and they thought that they make a good economic deal, but afterwards they waste it without any economic loss for them. Uh, here we have some more important, but still very hard to change uh, issues, which are donation constraints. In Europe, we still don't have any country with uh, any kind of law that would take out liability from companies that donate food. Uh, such a law exists in America, in the United States, is the Food Donation Act, which when supermarkets donate food, the liability and reputation is, uh, and uh, responsibility is taken away from them if the food causes some uh, health problems or diseases. So this kind of law has to be changed. And then we have awareness, and it's both on the inside level, inside the supermarkets and outside. Supermarkets also don't know about what kind of waste they produce. Here we have the most important and the uh, most feasible. We start with pool deliveries. These are, this is due mostly to the overloaded trucks that come to supermarkets and then the food is wasted because it was just, uh, I don't know, the tomatoes were uh, squeezed, for instance. Uh, Sell-by dates. This is a very important issue because sell-by dates are set uh, most of the time before the expiration date. Uh, so supermarkets, because they are afraid of getting fined by uh, some organizations, uh, they're throwing away food that is still edible. And also this is a law that it's now in uh, debate and some governments are trying to change. In Spain it's also now in debate. And what we call the abundance principle, you have saw on the picture before, the abundance in supermarkets. You enter the supermarkets because it's full and it's full of uh, food and it gives you the feeling that food is unlimited. Never ends and when it ends in the fridge you just take your car or walk and you go to the supermarkets and again you have a full basket and so on and so on. But it's uh, very unlikely also to change it because of the supermarket how they um, create their business. And we have chosen the most important for us which is awareness because we believe that this is the, the first thing to do. So why awareness? First of all, because it informs all stakeholders, including supermarkets, uh, what are the exact number of food waste and later on it can create the problem visible and more understandable for the whole society. 
When the problem is visible and understandable, the society can react in a more clear way. It can, um, uh, and it can involve more social innovators. Uh, some people can, even for free on the internet, come up with some solutions, send them to the supermarkets. It just creates a debate when the problem is obvious and the real numbers are shown. And with that, that numbers, we can know exactly what to do, what kind of food is wasted the most. We can change our diet habits. Many solutions can be uh, provided. And lastly, uh, it's the starting point of any other change. Uh, with all the reasons you have so before, uh, seen before, uh, awareness is the first um, point to change in order to change all the other reasons. It may create some other change. Okay. So, uh, now we move on to the practical approach. Before we start, we would like to show you the tipping point theory introduced by Malcolm Gladwell. For some of you who are not familiar with it, we will represent you and we'll show you the three main ideas. The first idea is the law of the few. It means that any change is usually led by a few individuals who are impacted by this problem or have a strong opinion about it and wanted to see it resolved. The next is the stickiness factor. It looks at the idea or the problem that is being discussed and whether it's interesting and material enough for other individuals who then begin to discuss it and, and start uh, creating solutions or finding ways to address it. The third principle is the law of the context, um, the power of the context. The thing is that everyone has so many issues, our world is filled with them, but there are certain ones that are more important depending on the resources and the uh, monetary factors. For instance, um, if, if a problem is only affecting a few individuals and there's no manpower or monetary uh, funds to address it, that problem will get left behind. However, if the situation is ripe and the problem is very important and there are resources to address it, then the problem will move on to the next level and begin to get discussed. Our group, we came up with five steps for creating awareness. How we can start creating awareness about the food waste issue. The first one is make the problem obvious. If you are not thinking about a problem, you're not gonna try and find solutions for it. Second, as soon as you make the problem obvious, it starts creating change. A good example of this is Tristan Stewart. He wrote a book called Waste, Uncovering the Food Scandal. And this book talked about the food waste and all the readers who read about it, they became interested. They saw that the problem was in their backyards. So they got together, they started creating organizations such as Love Food, Hate Waste, which tries to reduce food waste on the retail and consumer level. As soon as you get a lot of people talking, you get responses, you get different ideas. Once that talk becomes very important and you have news media covering it, you get, um, you, get, next. you get the public debate. And the public debate happens when there's people with influence, such as uh, government officials or celebrities or anyone that starts talking about it and they can reach a lot of people. So once you have the public debate, the local uh, people on the local level, they start contacting their representatives and that's how you get the legal action. And once you have the legal action, it makes addressing any problem much easier because you have the support of the government. A good way of uh, demonstrating this is recycling. When recycling was first introduced, people thought that those who recycled were green or environmentalist and it was just a very weird thing to do. But slowly people started talking about it and we've reached the point where governments provide people, at least in the United States, um, bins for recycling. And this makes it much easier to recycle. There's a lot of promotion. So this can be done also with the food waste issue. Okay, we have also uh, created, um, let's call it um, a guide on how to talk to supermarkets, how to approach uh, supermarkets. So we have also three groups, legal, economic, and reputation uh, issues. First, legal. We ha supermarkets have to understand that uh, legislative change in, is in their own interest. If we make some of these laws uh, happen and we make them the reality, it will be much easier for them to uh, change their behavior because it's gonna be just, they're gonna have some incentive for it. First of all, the issue that was already mentioned is the, are the donation constraints. The law, the Food Donation Act has to be introduced. So far in Spain, uh, we have um, 
There's some tax deduction, which is for supermarkets 35%, for individuals 25%. Um, some other countries, I know for instance in Poland, uh, you have, actually when you donate food, you have to pay an additional tax for the donation, so it's a completely uh, absurd. Um, uh, then another issue is uh, the differenti differentiation between food waste and waste. It's still not being done in any country in the world, and if such law it's, would be passed, it would totally change uh, the game for the supermarkets. They could put the food uh, in other bins um, and um, other waste in some other traditional uh, bins. The economic part is that waste is seen uh, by the supermarket as an integral part of the business, which is a huge mistake because waste should be seen as an additional cost. This waste can be reduced, so the cost can also be reduced, which eventually will uh, result in higher profits uh, by the supermarkets or they could invest to some other to explore, the, to expand their business. Was that what, I, what we already talked about is the optimization of orders and this will also include in the reduction of waste, which is a huge problem uh, as far as the abundance principle is concerned. Another issue is also that uh, waste that supermarkets produce, they have to uh, take it to landfills. Each ton costs money, so it's a cost for them. Um, they need to know that there is a new uh, European Union land, uh, landfill directive that uh, says that by 2020, the all waste that is targeted, that is taken to landfills, need to be reduced by 90% um, concerning the 2006 um, baseline. Um, it's still a directive, but maybe it will become a regulation, but still supermarkets and big companies have to address this issue because it's going to become uh, more and more important. And finally, reputation. Um, risk can be seen as an opportunity for supermarkets uh, as far as showing food waste data is concerned. Um, there is an example in, U in UK. Tesco was the leader at this market, um, at the supermarket market in the UK. And recently, they um, spent 500 million pounds on a campaign called War on Prices. They wanted to reduce their prices in order in crisis times to uh, encourage consumers buying more items at their stores. Unfortunately, last year was the first year since for 20 years that Tesco had a decrease in profits. Uh, on the other hand, Sainsbury, for instance, grew much in this time because it's one of the few um, supermarkets that actually address the food waste issue, as well as also Marks and Spencer, and these two supermarkets are now the leaders at the UK market. Supermarkets also need to know that Nowadays, there is a new way of uh, information diffusion. Uh, we have social media, Facebook, Twitter. We have uh, internet. The information goes very fast. There is an example in America, they, some so-called the dumpster divers, people that go to dumpsters and dive for food and they eat it, um, uh, made a movie called Dive uh, about uh, looking for food in the dumpster of a supermarket called Trader Joe's. After they revealed this movie, a lot of people started saying that they won't buy um, food at the supermarket and actually the profits of the sales of the supermarket dropped. And what was the response of Trader Joe's? They just closed the dumpsters. So they won't have any other uh, people doing the same kind of movies. Well, this is why supermarkets have to know that can, they can be blackmailed and they should avoid it. This is why addressing this issue is so important. So. We will finish with the conclusions. The first one is a very obvious one, and it's that we live in a world with finite resources. As we continue to extract the resources that are wasted, the price of food will continue to rise. And as the population of the world grows, that's going to be a big problem, not only for the hungry, but for the middle class average person who can't afford to buy food anymore. Um, another issue is that number of food insecure families is growing. Um, in Spain, uh, this number has, of these families has in recent years, in the years of crisis, has grown by four times. Only in America, in the United States, you have 10% of the society is also malnourished. It's 30 million people. So it's not, we're not only talking about the developing countries that are hungry, which is also an important issue, but also here in developed countries, we also have a lot of those families and this is why we were involved in this project that wanted to connect the food waste issue together with the insecure families. And finally, we all live in risky times. If we look at the Chinese symbol for risk, 
it means crisis plus opportunity. We have all experienced crisis in the past few years, and now is really the time for both supermarkets and individuals to take this risk and make something positive out of it. There are groups that really care about this. It's very easy to dispense information, and companies can make more profit if they learn how to be more efficient and stop wasting food. So mind your waste, and thank you all for your attention. Just, uh, we wanted to add that we have some other uh, solutions that we have mentioned in our paper, so if anybody would like to know them, just send us an email, we can send you the paper. And we also have uh, uh, done a movie which uh, we want to show you, well not now because we don't have time, but later after the whole, all the presentations are done in room 03. Before the cocktails. So, please come. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, uh, congratulations. It's, uh, you've done a great job presenting and, and you've definitely convinced me. I, mean, I love all that passion that you, that you show on stage. Um, I'm, I'm all for um, being more conscious this weekend um, and on, of course. I, I have a question. Um, is, uh, are there consultants out there selling this? in the sense of going to supermarkets and saying, hi guys, you need to start analyzing your food waste and we can do it for you? Because I'm thinking that maybe some supermarkets, even if they're smaller, they want to, st I mean, if you, for example, you walked in and told them, I'm sure they'd buy it uh, through all the passion, but you know, are there resources out there for these people to actually uh, start doing the right thing? And are there, leg that's my first question. My second question, I don't know if you know, but are there legislations, in other parts of the world um, that are encouraging or good practices, but from a governmental um, sector to, to encourage supermarkets to start taking this into consideration? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, in regards to the first part, yes, they are. As we mentioned, there's this organization in the UK. It's called Love Food Hate Waste. And what they do is that it's voluntary, but they go to the retail sector and they have many partners already, Tesco, Marks and Spencer, and they try to educate them about food waste. The thing is, supermarkets still see food waste numbers as a big risk for their reputation. So what these supermarkets end up doing is having just a website where they teach their consumers how not to have food waste. And some have started reducing their packaging. But there is no supermarket, well, there's one, Sandsbury. Uh, when the Channel 4 News in the UK, they approached all the top uh, supermarkets to ask them about their food waste figures, none of them gave the, the figures except for Sandsbury. And as we mentioned earlier, this supermarket has very good customer uh, reputation, which is why they're now the leader. So those supermarkets who are not addressing this should take a look at Sandsbury and start changing their actions. Yeah, actually, UK is a very good example. They also there is a this governmental organization called uh, RAP. Uh, it's Waste and uh, Resources Action Program, and they have together with the government they have created an action in order to approach supermarkets, the the big five, and they are now in or, they are now creating the legislation. It doesn't exist. For instance, the, they want to introduce the Food Donation Act. Uh, in, they are also now debating about the sell by dates. It's still not being introduced, but they want to, to totally erase the um, sell by dates from, um, from law. In Spain, some group of uh, professors together with an organization called, how was, what is the name? Excess, Excend, I don't remember the, the right name, but they are also creating a legislation to introduce it in Spain as far as the dates are concerned. And actually, you have a good example when you actually wanted to approach a supermarket. Yes, I went to approach a supermarket at Whole Foods, which is in America, and the way I approached them was uh, try to convince them that they can make more money by taking the food that they're about to throw away, and they have cooking classes, so use that food there, and for the consumers that come, make those items on discount. Um, they told me it was a great idea, but sadly they can't put those items on discount because it will change the way people buy items. They will start waiting for that end of the month to, to buy food. So that was the problem. In, in regards to your question about legislation that exists, 
uh, United States is the leader now about f on food waste and Bill Clinton, he signed into action the Food Donation Act, which takes away the liability of supermarkets that want to donate food for charitable actions. And even though this law exists, supermarkets are still afraid and they still see it as a big reputational risk. So despite this, this legislative action, they're not doing anything. So maybe it's not just having the law, it's also about having the government push them to, to participate. It's quite funny also that you mentioned now because it was signed by Bill Clinton so 16 years ago and they are still yeah. the leader. So it yeah. just shows you how much is done. Thank <laughs> you.